Max. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for talking to us. Of course. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, congratulations. Season four is finally here. I hate oh. to do that to you guys, though, because <laughs> rightfully so, season four had to take a break because of the pandemic and everything had to go on pause. So were you as eager to get back to work as maybe the fans were eager to maybe see season four? Oh, yeah, probably more so. I mean, I, I felt especially grateful to have this job because everybody in the kind of community of the show is so lovely. Like normally when you do something, as I'm sure you know from, from your work life too, there's like one bad egg. There's like always one person that everyone sort of hates and talks about behind their back. And maybe I'm that person. Um, but I, I've never been on something where everyone gets along so well. The spirit of the show, despite how dark the, um, the, what we're, we're shooting is, the actual kind of environment is very kind of uh, light and playful. So I, I, I really was so, so happy to be back with, with my friends, but also back in Toronto. Yeah, that has to be amazing because, I mean, you guys have been together for a really long time. And like you said, the content can be a little dark. And these are things that, you know, some people are seeing in real life, I guess you can say. So I think you guys have done such an amazing job and you can tell because it plays it off on screen. A question for you, Thanks. because now we're going into season four. So I know season one, you get a script and you have a character and you kind of have to come up with a backstory for this person. So what is it like now for season four and congratulations, season five? now preparing for the character of like say someone like Nick what's like the preparation like from season one to season four it's a great question you know to be honest I've never done a long-running show like this before. of course it's all very new to me this kind of idea that a you would be able to play a character for so long which I've loved more than I ever could possibly have anticipated like I really enjoy the idea of sitting with with this character for for a long period of time and I've, you know, it's been just about long enough now that I'm starting to evolve in my life too. So it's a, re that's a really fun, that's a fun thing to sort of reflect on in terms of approach. It's, you know, what's interesting about doing TV is, is I often don't know what, what's going to happen. You know, the, the, the character is sort of being revealed to you. So the work for me was much more about, I think, understanding sort of the essence of this person. And, and now I feel like, I really know him. Um, they say that you're sort of comfortable with a character when you could sort of play them on Jeopardy and sort of know what they would say. And I feel like after four years of this, I'm just about in a place where I sort of know how Nick Blaine would answer questions on Jeopardy. Um, I, I love getting to play the character and I love getting to work with these people. I mean, it's insane this year. I'm working almost exclusively with Brad and Lizzie who are just, you know, the best. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, you, for four seasons, I'm saying because we start season four soon, You, your story arc, I think, is kind of remarkable because you see this guy, Nick, who he has to play his part. He has to play a part and loyalty comes to play. But now we're going into season four and Nick is higher up on the chain. Um, <laughs> so what can fans, I guess, expect from Nick as far as loyalty? Is it loyalty to work? June? Like, what's that like for the character of Nick? Well, I think you just said it better than I could. I mean, his loyalty is always to June, but I think he's also having to walk this fine line of not wanting to sabotage his position because then he can no longer be useful. So it's like it's this tricky balancing act all the time. Um, that he, by the way, he makes mistakes sometimes. He doesn't always get it right. But I maybe because I play him and I see him through rose tinted lenses a little bit. My 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 belief is that his his heart is in the right place. I think it, I think it is. I, and I don't know if it's because I watched the show for so long and I know you have a character that you like and you kind of fall in love with them. You're like, we love Nick, <laughs> but Nick, the character Nick is human. So um, yeah. for you, what do you hope? Because congratulations, you guys are having a season five. So what do you hope to see for Nick, your character Nick for season five? Well, I've got to tell you, I saw, I just watched episode 10 and it completely upended any expectations I had of where this show was going to go. I'm now just like, well, I can't predict anything. Um, I don't want to predict anything. Anytime I try to with The Hammond's Tale, I make a mistake. Um, they're a very mischievous bunch of people. Bruce Miller, I think comes from the top. Bruce Miller is a mischievous guy. He's got a great devilish sense of humor and i think that sort of runs through the writer's room and i think they love kind of playing with audience expectations 
Well, listen, you guys always keep me at the edge of my seat. Um, a question I do, last question for you. I always wanted to know, have you ever gotten the script and you've read something where maybe your character or any hmm. other character and you're like, wait, whoa, where you're kind of like knocked off your seat a little bit? Because I feel like when I'm watching the show, I'm knocked off the seat because so many twists and turns. So have that ever happened to you? Like, yeah. You know, I, yeah, look, the, the show is resonant in a lot of ways, but I... It's if you just serve, you know, Bradley Whitford has this great um, civic vegetables, you know, if you just turn, like serve civic vegetables without great storytelling, nobody wants to eat the vegetables. Um, and I and I've always thought the success of the show is actually not about its political relevance. It's, it's about this great sort of um, page turnery sort of um, fiction that they've created. And I'm like you, you know, even though I've re read the script, I'm in the show. Um, whenever I come to watching it, I always find myself sort of staying up until four o'clock in the morning and being like, let's go watch one more and see what happens. Um, and I think that's why it's good. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I'm with you in that. I, I, I engage with the show with, with a similar kind of excitement and curiosity about how it's going to play out. Where is the bus? Oh, yeah. Where is the bus? You said it was mine. Where is the bus? <laughs>